gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Here we are live and you know what it is and you know, and you know what time it is right now. It's 10.30 p.m. Karbala time. That means it's time for hashtag guarantee live from the holy city of Karbala. Now I know that this show you guys never get tired of it. So that's why you're joining us again for episode 14 of the second season of hashtag LNT. Now tonight... We're talking about, I mean, how, how, how do I explain it? We're talking about how you're watching me right now. That's as basic as I can put it. You know what I mean? But we'll go jump into what's trending and come back to you guys in a few moments. Once again, welcome everyone who's joining us tonight. Now, India, India's top court has ruled out adultery from its crime list, striking down a 158-year-old colonial-era uh, law which said that women uh, treated women as male property. Now, previously, any man who had sex with a married woman without the permission of her husband was committing a crime. Now, a petitioner had challenged the law saying that it was uh, arbitrary and discriminated against women, men and women uh, alike. Now, it's clear that how many women, uh, it's, it's not clear enough how many men uh, have actually been persecuted so far uh, for this crime, adultery, before uh, this bill was filed or, or ruled, uh, as there's no data for that. But this comes as the second colonial era law that has been ruled out by India's higher court you know just in the same month this same month it also out, uh, outturned a 157 uh, year old uh, law uh, which effectively criminalized gay marriage in India so we see two laws in one month which are over a century old being taken down what's going on that's what the world's talking about, and that's what trending is all about. So let's go jump into tonight's topic. I just have one question for you guys before we jump into tonight's topic. What are you watching me through right now? If I was to break it down to you, or break it down for you, you're watching hashtag LNT through a television channel called Imam Hussein TV3. <laughs> now, that's the least we can say about it. Now, TV channels in general are a medium to convey a certain message to audience, basically viewers, aka you guys. Now, another medium for, um, another medium that would also convey a message are newsletters. For example, you have the Independent, where most of you guys read it, skim through it just to get information of what's happening around the world. Now, this is just a small part of the world of media. Another huge example that we use on an hourly basis, or sometimes some of us, aka Ali Jassim, use it on a minutely basis, um, is social media. Now, we all love sitting on a couch or laying down in bed with our smartphones, whether iPhones or Samsungs. I don't want to get into the rivalry because uh, iPhones are too expensive now, so I might jump to Samsung. Um, who knows? But, you know, just your smartphone. You know, texting your boys and girls texting their sisters, of course. You don't want... We, you, you, you can text a sister, but she has to be, you know, mahram to you, or we don't want to get into that as well. Now, the world nowadays greatly depends on interacting or communicating with friends and family uh, from abroad, especially now nowadays, the world um, has expanded. People have um, traveled abroad. They have lived abroad. They're not living in their whole country, home countries anymore. So, this medium, so to speak, has brought people together, such as friends and family. Now, tonight on hashtag LNT, as we're using a, a pretty good medium, which exists in every home, we're trying to ask that every home the question. Of episode 14 what are the pros and cons of media and that's your question for tonight 
So get your phones ready, just like how I'm getting it ready. Uh, and dial that phone number right there quick before it goes off the show. And if you don't catch the last two numbers or three numbers, um, you can get them right after the break. But it's plus nine six four seven seven four. 067-1836 and that's I got my phone ready I just put it on silent just in case I didn't get a text message but just like how I got a text message you can shoot a text message to that number right there or give us a phone call live free on whatsapp which is alhamdulillah um, and you can send a voice note as well let's go jump into a quick break and come back to you guys in a few moments Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope everyone is um, somewhat enjoying the night. However, tonight is the seventh night after Muharram uh, Sabah al-Imam. Uh, it's a tradition that seven days after people continue to mourn Imam al Hussein. as we were having a few processions going by the channel, alhamdulillah, before the show, not during. Now, we are live on Facebook, so you can go comment, Ya Hussein, and say, Salam, Ya Hussein. No, I'm just kidding. Go actually answer the question, which is what are the pros and cons of media? Salam ya Hussein and Labbaik ya Hussein, and please send my salam to Hussein. That's all for my brother Mustafa Al Khatib, uh, aka Mustafa Buzurganian, uh, who is hosting Welcome to Karbala. Uh, so those comments are for that show. So leave those for that show. And do answer the question for tonight What are the pros and cons of media? Very simple question. Cons, you can just name them off your head. Uh, sorry, pros, you can name them off your head. But let's see how many people actually think of the cons. Let's see that. But, as I mentioned tonight's question, what are the pros and cons of media? The number to call in is right at the bottom. You can call us via WhatsApp, toll free, uh, plus 964-774-067-1836, right at the bottom of the screen, right at below the, the question. Now, as we were mentioning before that break, and as we were mentioning before I gave it a long introduction on how to call the show, um, mass media today are mostly divided into two main parts. Now, number one, first, there's the print media, where you have your books, journals, magazines, and newspapers. And then you have the second part, which comes to electronics or audiovisuals, just like the internet, just like social media, uh, radio and television, and of course, the internet. Now, in recent years, the mass media has been thriving, growing in four main parts, or four main ways, so to speak. They increase in number of TV channels, radio stations, and print titles, and the intake of social content. Now, this has drastically increased over the past few decades. Now, as, well, as we all know, that each mass, me, each mass media has its own policy and its own goals. To reach the largest number of viewers and audience, and of course, subscribers. Now, a brief history of social media. Up until uh, Johannes uh, Gutenberg uh, in the 15th century, uh, where he invented uh, the movable type printing press, uh, the first newsletter. There's a guy right there, you know, books uh, and write handwritings, uh, which both copies, you know, they, they, they're the same, practically almost the same. Uh, but the printing press, ever since that, made the mass production print of media very possible. Everyone was looking at it as like, wow, this is something new, you know, I'm getting it delivered to my door. Or, not, 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 not there yet, we're not there yet, but, you know, as printing, you can go pick it off instead of, you know, someone telling you a story or something, and you have to write it down. So, it's, it's a book, handwritten or printed, and it gives out to you. Now, then gradually, the new transportation methods got in, where the book or newsletter, now, the newsletters were introduced, now, they're sent to your home, based on the address you provide. Now, moving along to the big part that we all use, social media. Sometimes they're watching us, you know, people watching us right now. Facebook, and you know, sometimes following us on Instagram, which you both you have to do. So go do that. During the show, just pause it, go do that, come back. But tonight, we're trying to talk about the different forms of media. But we'll do that. But um, if we can just take a few, a few moments as a break, 
and we can come back to you uh, very, very, very short, inshallah, to continue talking about social media and media in general. got that name imprinted on your head you know I just took that break um, just to get a you know a sip of water so it was good three loops uh, of hashtag LNT uh, break but as I mentioned uh, tonight we're trying to talk about the importance and the pros and cons of media now according to a pure research done 76% um, of American adults online use social media uh, sites just like Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. As of July 2015, which is, you know, it went up from 26 um, in 2008. Now, nowadays, most people get their news updates and, and what's going on around the world from Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's, it's much easier for a lot of people. It's not just, you know, uh, snapping selfies and posting it, you know, the, the the old selfies that people, even now, they still take in the bathroom with the stall behind them. I still don't get the idea of you guys doing that, so I I, th I think guys should stop that, you know, because cause I think we're over it. You know, high school days, yes, you can probably take that picture and get away with it because maybe stalls were the thing back then, I don't know. But it's not just for snapping selfies and putting it on or, you know, praying to God that you get, you know, so many likes and so many comments uh, on your post. It's much more than that. Social media has changed people's lives in so many ways. As we'll get to talk about that, inshallah, later on in the episode. But before we do that, let's take this text message. So uh, Jabbar from the USA says a pro keeps everyone updated uh, with what is happening in the world. A con, it can help spread false news quickly and absolutely thank you very much uh, jabbar from uh, the united states of america uh jabbar i had, I had a friend named jabbar he was in texas uh, so maybe that's him uh, shout out to him uh, if he's watching the show uh now <clears throat> as we were saying um a pew, uh, a pew research that was done saying that 76 percent of ad american adults use social media pro uh, websites such as facebook uh, Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth. However, a lot of people sometimes tend to misuse it, which we'll get to talk about that later on as well. Now, we can say that there are hundreds, well, not hundreds, maybe tens of thousands of TV channels, radio stations um, out in the world right now. You know, from TV channels and radio stations to newspapers, magazines, journals, all of them having one motive, printing all kinds, uh, you know, or targeting all kinds of readers. And of course, the immeasurable platform or range that the internet provides. Yes, maybe the newspapers deliver to you on a daily basis, except for maybe Saturday and Sunday, maybe what it is, seven days a week. But at the same time, you might not read or the news in there might not catch your attention because newspapers are so huge. Last time I read a newspaper was back in like 2013 or 2014. Now, you just open up Facebook and you can get that newspaper. Just follow them on Facebook and you'll see their news coming up. So you, you don't have to spend that much money. You don't have to waste paper. And you know, at the same time, you're getting what's good in the world. You, you're knowing everything that's happening in the world. Now, all told, we have more ways to reach people out in the world than we had, you know, a, f a few decades or a few centuries ago. You know, back then, people used to send letters, you know, thousands of miles or even just 10 miles away. They would have to send a letter to someone, write it down, and then take like a day to get there, day back, and then wait for that person to reply, which is another day, and that's if they reply right away, but if they reply with like an LOL or a K, 
then I don't know, I don't know how they replied with like those kind of words or, or terms. But yeah, subhanAllah, as we just got it right now, subhanAllah, someone around the world texted us and we just got it in a few seconds. Who is it from? Zijvi, uh, Zij, Zijavi, um, uh, from Tanzania. He says, uh, we all use media on a daily basis and I think the pros outweigh uh, the cons. Yes, maybe, as we'll get to uh, find out in a few moments, inshallah. But thank you, uh, Zij, Zijavi, uh, from, I think, isn't that like a Russian, Russian name? Maybe it's like a Sakhfarah, never mind. Uh, but ZJV, thank you very much from Tanzania uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Now, I want to take a few moments to check out the pros and cons as uh, the brother from Tanzania message. Uh, I hope it's a brother, sorry if it's a, if, if, if it's a sister. Uh, but for, for joining us uh, tonight. Now, one pro, we'll begin with pros, one pro that is affiliated to social media or media in general is that before mass media as I mentioned people used to take a lot of effort to write the message down on, on you know like skins and then roll that up with a stamp and then send it somewhere and it takes forever for them to reply or you know just the distances sometimes if, if something happens on the other side of the world you won't know about it but now because social media is so available everywhere, every country has social media now, especially internet, you need internet for social media, but it keeps everyone connected. Everyone knows, you know, for example, when the, the, the law that outruled uh, adultery or that, you know, that removed adultery from being a crime, reached CNN and Fox News and everywhere just in a few moments as that rule was, was built. As you can see right there, it brings everyone across the world, whether you're living in Africa, North America, South America, wherever, wherever, it brings everyone together. As we saw in the World Cup, everyone was watching and supporting their own team. Another pro of media is business expansion. You can expand your business. You know, now imagine you're starting up your business, but absolutely no advertisement absolutely no flyers going out you're not telling anyone what you have in the store so you're probably the only one you're the only consumer of the products you sell you probably take you know just grocery shopping uh you know a cart and you just pile up stuff take it home however on media now you can post ads you can post so many things on there that a lot of people might be attracted to so what happens then is that your business starts to expand and that's one of the pros of media and social media. Another one is that it spreads education and culture. And this is very important. One of the main objectives of IHTV3 is spreading education and culture. It shows, um, you know, we're not limiting it just because I work for the channel, but what I'm trying to say is that TV channels in general if you were to go to you know, Abu Dhabi Discovery Channel, then you'll probably see um, their ads on you know, the, the, the culture in, in Africa, what's found in Africa, what people know about Africa, um, and, and different countries as well. People living in the West don't really know what's happening in the East, don't know the cultures. You can basically go write something quickly on the internet. What are the cultures of Iraqi? Or what are the cultures present in Iraq? And you can find a hundred thousands of websites that give you the cultures in Iraq. <clears throat> you ask about who is Hussein, who is Imam Hussein. What, what are the Husseini cultures, so to speak? You can just type that into Google, and it comes out to you. So, in a way, social media and media put together, they're a way to spread education and culture. And nowadays, if, you, if, if you're stuck in, 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 in mathematics and calculus or functions, you can probably go on, or, or you know, biology or whatever. I remember in, in, in university, I used to do that. Every time I'm stuck on something, I don't go to the tutor or the professor. I just go online, write um, the, 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 the question that I have, and the solution comes up. So education is at your fingertips. Another one is that it gives voice to the voiceless. And that's one of the most beautiful parts I love about social media and media. 
A lot of people around the world right now don't have a voice. A lot of people view others and look at how successful they become. And look how rich and wealthy they've become based on you know maybe poverty or, or something else. A lot of people right now don't have voices. They're poor. They can't you know, bring out their voice. They, they live in a remote village somewhere out of the city. You know, the, the, probably the most advanced thing is they have a small cell phone and that's it where they can call. However, when media came in, the tribes in Africa and, and Safari, they were explored. The tribes in Iraq, they were explored. The tribes everywhere, cultures everywhere were explored. If there was a poor village, a reporter would go there, do some interviews, bring it in back to the, the, back to the agency, and they would write something about it to get help for those individuals. How do you think that the Arab Spring came about? Yes, it started from you know, maybe hundreds of people who began to, you know, to protest against the government. But at the same time, if it wasn't for the media to boost um, whatever was happening in Egypt or Libya or Syria or wherever, it boosted up so much that a lot of people started supporting the cause of those who wanted freedom and justice for their country. But I believe we should take a, a break, a very quick break, uh, and come back to you guys in a few moments to continue talking about the pros of social media. think I was trying to get another uh, quick water break as I was I actually was uh, but thanks to social media I was able to tell uh, the guys to bring me some water because you know technology is a type of some sort of media but anyways uh, now we got over the pros of media and social media and we ended it off with giving voice to the voiceless another one if we were to move on we would move on to the cons there are a lot of pros but we we'll do just a quick summary. One of the pros or the first, sorry, one of the cons or first con of media is that empower the already powerful. What do I mean by that? Right now, a lot of agencies, a lot of channels, and everyone knows this, especially in the Arab world and in the West as well, the people in power tend to have influence and heavy influence on TV channels. In Iraq, majority, if not 99% of the channels are run by politicians. Each politician has his own channel where he brought or, or you know, uh, sends propaganda um, you know, in favor of his channel. Same in the world. Right now, whatever we see on the channel as news has another f story to it. Why? Because that story is biased to that channel or biased to that group that supports this channel. <clears throat> so you have to always look at it from different angles. Even the news nowadays, people have, you know, their, their analysts going through and analyzing each news that comes out to see the different ways that the story is, is put forth, whether it's right whether it's wrong, sending people to check out if, if this information is right or wrong. Another con of media is that it can be used for discrimination. Now, what's happening, it's unfortunate. What's happening in Syria, what's happening in, in, in Yemen is a form of discrimination. The news isn't really showing the world what's actually going on in, in Yemen and who are the ones being killed in Yemen the ones being killed in Yemen are children Saudi Arabia is only targeting hospitals schools and villages where children are in just like what we saw a few a few weeks ago with the school bus so 
the media is showing that, you know what, some rebels are in the city and then you know, the city got bombed and so on and so forth. There always has to be another story to that. And that's what social, uh, what media is somehow right now, it's unfortunate to see, it is sending discriminative propaganda where others, you know, they, they, they might understand the wrong story about someone. That's like how Islamophobia right now, a lot of people are, are Islamophobic. Why? Because media and, and YouTube videos and YouTube channels and people going out speaking against Islam, not knowing what Islam has to offer, are putting up these videos and putting up these statements. And people, as a result of that, people now are Islamophobic. At the end of the day, it's discrimination. Another one, another con of uh, media or social media is it's harmful if overused. Now those people who spend you know, their, their, their whole life watching TV, uh, playing games on social media, you know, as I mentioned earlier, sleeping on the bed, um, you know, being a couch potato, not going outside, you know, actually achieving something. Spending time on social media can can be dangerous, you know. It it can. Why? Because not ev not everything on there should be read and should be viewed. That's why there's <clears throat> there's the disclaimers, there's the warnings out there that's telling you this is not this content may not be right for you. You know that's why YouTube has age restrictions. Why? Because if a lot of people use social media and use the media. Overuse of it can cause irritation to the eye, sometimes diseases to the eye, and sometimes even worse things, and we don't want to get into that. But let's get this text message. Zahra from the UK she says, there are pros and cons for media. It just depends on how we use it. Thank you very much, Zahra uh, from the UK, for letting us uh, know that. Yes, it does depend on how you use it. Now, and we'll tell you right now, what the correct way of using it uh, right now. One beautiful way, and I mentioned it um, in the last episode of season one. If you guys want to go check it out, you can go view uh, all the episodes of hashtag LNT as they are uploaded to YouTube, uh, inshallah. You can just type hashtag LNT and the episodes will come out. Now, one beautiful way where you can take advantage of social media and media in general through TV channels, through radio stations, through newspapers, through social media websites, through everything, you know, everything, documentary films. The way to take advantage of those is disseminating the right knowledge. You know, for every story, you know, there, 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 there's another side to it. But there's one story that everyone needs to focus on, and that's the story of Ahl Bayt, the, the, the biographies, the information, the knowledge of Ahl Bayt that needs to be disseminated. A lot of people are, are sitting and watching us right now thinking that, you know what, why are they focusing on, you know, always mention disseminate the knowledge of Ahl Bayt, disseminate the knowledge of Ahl Bayt. Right now, the world needs to understand who the Ahl Bayt are, because Shia right now are not only in the Middle East, they're everywhere. Sometimes people discriminate against them not knowing who they actually are, who they follow, what teachings are in their books. And Muslims in general, not just Shia, Muslims in general. So the best way is to disseminate the Islamic knowledge derived from the Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them. So one of the best ways is to always remember Ahlul Bayt in a post. You know, you, you can share, you can do whatever. But at the same time, use these platforms that are provided to you at your fingertips. Everyone has a smartphone now. At your fingertips, spread something about Imam Hussein. One quote a day, one lesson that you've learned from Imam Hussein. Once a day, once every three, four days, once every month or week. Do it for the sake of Imam Hussein. Because trust me, everyone gains from the post you post. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.